Hello, my name is Robin, and I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch this new video of mine. I'm back at the airport of Edmonton, and I'm here to fly with Air Canada Rouge with their Boeing 767. It's not the first time that I'm flying on Rouge's 767. Two years ago, when I went to Canada for the first time, on my way back to Spain, where I was living back then, I flew on their 767 as well. And it was back on that flight that I decided that I wanted to go live in Canada for a bit. And now it is one year exactly that I'm in Canada today. So this flight does have some sentimental value for me right now. Anyway, I'm going to be taking you with me through security and then onto the terminal. So please come with me. There is no dedicated check-in desk for Rouge at the airport and parent company Air Canada handles all check-ins and baggage for their low-cost subsidiary. If you travel light like I do, you can also use one of the kiosks to get your boarding pass from. And when I did, I got the generous offer to upgrade to premium Rouge for only $800. No thank you. I had come to the airport a bit early and I had finally decided to check out the observation deck. It's a great place to wait at when you have friends or family come in, but unfortunately, it's nothing spectacular for us AVE geeks. The Boeing 767-300ER we're flying on today was built in September of 1992 and has quite a rich history actually. The first operator was Air Europe Italy, who flew the aircraft until 1999. Then the aircraft briefly flew for the Swiss airline Balair until 2000, after which Air Canada leased the 767 to then sublease it to Canadian Airlines during their merger process in 2000. Can you still follow me? Once the merger was complete, the aircraft became Air Canada's once more. Then Air Canada subleased the Boeing to the Melbourne-based NZ Australia, but the airline went bankrupt before they could even fly it, so it went back to Air Canada, who then flew it in their main fleet until it was handed down to the current operator Rouge in 2016. Rouge has a total of 25 767-300 aircraft in their fleet, but not all of them are as exciting as this one. Out of the 25, 9 and including this one don't have winglets installed. For short haul flights, Rouge operate the A319, A320 and the A321. The Rouge 767 has a total of 282 seats, of which 258 in economy in a 2-3-2 configuration. The cabin feels as old as the aircraft is, although it looks like they try to disguise that with different colors of lighting in the cabin. The age of the plane was just as visible in the lavatories. My seat today was 43k and the seat was actually surprisingly comfortable and it probably did help that I didn't have a neighbor and the whole row next to me was empty as well. Unlike the parent airline, Rouge does not have seatback screens 
and instead streams movies straight to your phone over Wi-Fi. The tray table is slightly adjustable and is large enough for a meal. Not as large though is the legroom, but with my height of 6 feet or 1 meter and 83 centimeters, it was just okay. In the seat pocket you can find the safety card, the Air Canada in-flight magazine, the menu and a guide on how to connect to the Wi-Fi. For added comfort, there is an adjustable headrest on the seat. And bonus points for the universal power outlet that you will need on a long flight, as Rouge have a quite large selection of movies to choose from, and I finally got to watch Toy Story 4. Connecting to the internet is a bit too expensive to my taste. And lastly, who puts the crew call button on the armrest? So many people accidentally press it that the crew just ignores it. I hadn't eaten too much before the flight, so I decided to take a look inside the menu to see what Rouge have to offer. The menu has a large selection of well presented items and they're definitely not overpriced compared to other airlines. When I had finally made the difficult choice between pizza or mac and cheese, I was told that only one of each had been loaded onto the aircraft and that I could buy a meal from the premium cabin for $14 instead. So I decided to have a beer and some delicious salted cashews instead. Stick around until after landing for my final two cents on this flight. Well, we made it to Toronto after about a three and a half hour flight and currently I'm in my hotel room here because tomorrow morning I have another flight waiting for me. And that is really only about five hours from now. So I got about a four hours to sleep. So I'm gonna keep this short. The flight today was a good one. I really liked the crew. They were engaging and they were happy and they really liked what they were doing. Um, unfortunately, there wasn't any food available. The only thing that was available was a meal from the premium rouge cabin for $14 and that was no that no I don't want to buy a second-hand meal from another class on on the other hand the 767 although it doesn't have a seat back screen it does have Wi-Fi and you can watch movies over your phone and I've been watching Toy Story 4 during this flight so really I don't think I need see a seat back screen if I have that the good thing about the 767 though is the layout of the seats. Two, three, two, and I had no one right next to me and there was another three seats right next to me in the center row completely free as well. So although there wasn't a lot of leg room with the space I had that way, it was pretty comfortable. It was a great flight for just over three hours. Anyway, that was all for today. I'm gonna go to sleep right now. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.